have an application here which lists many products, and each product can also belong to multiple categories. So there's a many-to-many -many association between products and categories. Now you can see this particular product doesn't have any product categories assigned to it, but we want to be able to assign categories using checkboxes when they edit the product in the form. Now these two models are associated using has many through, as you can see here in the product model, it has many categories through this join model called categorizations. So a categorization belongs to both a category and a product. And our category model is set up the same way, have has many products through categorizations. Now this technique I will show you here will also work for a has and belongs to many association, but I highly recommend using has many through instead of has and belongs to many, just as a lot more flexible. Now that has many through association provides a nice method for accessing the category IDs on a product. Let me show you here in the console. First I'll fetch a new product record, and then I can uh, call category IDs on a product to fetch the category IDs for a given product. Now I can also set category IDs through this method as well. You can see that assigns the categories and ends up creating categorization records automatically for us. So now I can fetch the categories through uh, our product model here and it will fetch the proper categories matching those IDs. And now you can see when we visit our product here, those categories are listed that we assigned in the console. And now we just have to change this so that those category IDs are submitted through the form uh, through checkboxes. So here's what that form template looks like. And currently we just have two form fields here for the product name and price, but we wanna add another one here for the categories. So instead of displaying a text field here, we need to loop through all the categories. So I'll just call each here and go through each one. And for each of these, we need to display a checkbox. Now normally when you wanna make a checkbox, you just call f.checkbox and then pass in an attribute such as category IDs. However, this will not work here because category IDs is an array and we need multiple checkboxes for the same attribute. So instead we need to go with a more manual approach of just calling checkbox tag. And then we have to assign this name to product category IDs, and then the key here is to end this with an open and close square brackets. This tells it to uh, bundle up all the values submitted into here into an array. So that way it's an array inside of the params hash. Now the next parameter is the value of the checkbox, and that should be category ID. So let's leave it at that for now, and then we'll just display our category name here, followed by a uh, break. So now when I reload this form page, you can see here the uh, checkboxes are now listed for each category, and let's try checking a couple of them. Hit update product, and that works. Now those categories are assigned to this product. But however, if we edit this, you can see that the checkboxes don't stay. So we need to uh, automatically check them if the product category is already assigned. We could do that as the third argument to this checkbox tag call here. We can see if the uh, product category IDs include the given category ID that we're on. Let's see if that works. Let's try this out by reloading the form. Yay, that works. Now our checkboxes are automatically checked. Now there is another bug here, and that is if we uncheck everything and try to submit the form, it's actually not going to uh, remove all the categories. It's just going to ignore it entirely. And that's because if all the checkboxes are removed, that value does not get submitted at all because it does not submit unchecked fields. So to get around this problem, we can go back to our form and add a hidden field before all of our checkboxes. And then we can assign that field the same name that we do our checkboxes here. And then we can just uh, pass a nil as a value here so nothing will be submitted. So this way, if no checkboxes are submitted, it always has this to fall back to. Now let's try this out by reloading this page here and uncheck everything. And now when I submit this, all categories are removed. So that works. Now there's one more issue that I want to resolve. And that is, if you try clicking on the category name, it doesn't check the box here, which is really poor user experience. Checkboxes especially should always be assigned as a label so that it always checks the box when you click on the label. Now it's easy enough to turn these into a label tag, but notice also that the checkboxes do not have a unique ID, each one is the same. So it's really bad practice anyway. So let's first give each of these a unique ID so that we can easily reference that inside of the label. So back into our form template, I need to add an ID option to this checkbox tag method, and it needs to be unique to the category. So to do that, I'm actually going to uh, use this helper method called DOM ID that Rails provides and pass in the category to it. So that way the ID will be category one or whatever the uh, ID for the category is. And then we need to turn our category name 
into a label tag and reference that same DOM ID here for the category and display the category name as a value of the label. So now reloading the page here, these are now clickable to reference which categories our product belongs to. Yay! Now the code we're left with works great, but it's a bit complicated, especially for the view. So you may want to extract this out into a form builder, but that's a bit out of the scope of this episode. Alternatively, you may want to use a gem such as SimpleForm or Formtastic. SimpleForm provides this method called collection checkboxes, which allows you to do the same thing, but it's in a much more concise manner, very similar to collection select. Formtastic has something very similar. The method is just called checkboxes there. Well, that's it for this episode. If you ever need to make a form with checkboxes for a many-to-many -many association, here's how you do it. Thanks for watching. Hope you found it useful.